Dora here, and today I just put the boat in, and we're getting ready to go to a cool place called Navajo Canyon. Launching the boat was a charm. For those of you not aware, Stateline Legacy Launch is opened and will stay open indefinitely. The launch is eight lanes wide and can launch any size watercraft. If you've heard any rumors about not being able to launch at Lake Powell, they simply are not true. So we got the boat running. The boat's warmed up outside. It's a nice 32 degrees. It's a nice 76 degrees inside. I think that's pretty comfortable. I have always wanted to show and report to the world Navajo Canyon. It was the go-to place this year for obvious reasons, and those will become more apparent later in this video. Having left Stateline Legacy Launch, I was greeted with the beautiful sights of Huawei Bay, Sand King, Castle Rock, Beached Rock, and Ice Cream Canyon, as well as much, much more. The first dock I passed on the way was the commercial dock. I'm happy to report that the two touring ferries closest to us are basically decommissioned and have been replaced with newer, better boats that create far smaller wakes. Huawei Marina was the next major dock I passed. You might notice it looks significantly different than it did earlier this year, as it has been rearranged to accommodate the low water levels. The narrows at the end of what used to be Huawei Creek are still easy to navigate, and they are also a minimum speed to maintain steerage zone. I'm driving through the main channel, and this is one of the coolest things about winter time. This main channel is perfectly flat. Check this out. The main channel can be a crazy place during the summertime, but I am happy to report that during the winter, the monster known as Maytag Canyon goes to sleep. I personally experienced six foot chop and eight foot waves and spray in this channel during a strong but not severe storm. Experiencing the channel like this felt like a gift, but always lurking was the fear the monster might wake up. The calmness and relaxed demeanor of my animals on board was a pretty good indication of how smooth things can be during the winter time. Another thing that is disconcerting about the main channel is that if anything goes wrong, there's nowhere to go. This particularly applies during the winter time as the water temperature is also too cold. A sinking vessel here is a death sentence, and that thought always lingers in my mind when I go through this main channel. Of course I had my plan B just in case, but all the same, the monster known as Maytag channel should never be underestimated. Always respect the power of this place. Holy smokes, there's another boat. So right behind me is Antelope Canyon. There it is. It's one of my favorite canyons. I'll include a link at the bottom of the video. Not far from Antelope Canyon is Antelope Launch, and further up lake would be Antelope Marina, a milestone for me. So behind me it might be kind of hard to see, but that is the old Antelope Marina Launch right there. As you can see, it's way out of the water. Pretty crazy, huh? Hopefully one day the water comes back up and it'll be usable again. As I got closer to the marina, a peculiar indication was the Antelope Canyon tour boat. Antelope Canyon is a very desirable place to see during the winter time. I just hope that enclosed tour boat has a heater. Antelope Point Marina was the next thing of note, and like I said earlier, in it lay a large milestone for me. It might be interesting to know, but Antelope Point Marina's restaurant and floating concrete structure was the largest of its kind when it was built, and it still might be. Upon entering, you will need to squeeze by one of its breakwater barriers, which seems to be getting smaller and smaller. I also find the workboats here to be quite interesting. I would love to one day have a tour of them. Those are the courtesy slips for Antelope Point Marina. With the passing of those right there, this will be the furthest this boat, my boat, has ever gone up lake. I personally have gone a lot further, but this right now, right now, <laughs> right now is the furthest my boat's ever gone up lake. How cool is that? It's pretty exciting. Look at the reflection on these houseboats windows. <laughs> Something about a boat named Valhalla. I still can't believe this is the furthest I've ever been on this boat. <laughs> I've been quite a few different places, but this is pretty exciting to be this far and see a new horizon through my windshields from my helm. I just, it's, uh, it's good. And I, I really gotta say thank you to the people that made this possible because I just uh, I still
still just can't believe it worked this way. Either way, I'm gonna go get some really good footage for you folks. I'm gonna make this count. So thank you so much. After passing Antelope Marina, the channel was wide. During these times, I get quite bored of just driving, so I set the boat in autopilot, which for reference isn't a thing on board, and I jump back and forth doing various tasks while always keeping an eye ahead. One of the tasks I often do while underway is the dishes. These ones had been sitting in the sink for quite some time, so best to make use of my spare time during traveling, as I will need all the rest of my spare time to do work capturing the lake and sharing it with you. Thor here, quick moment of your time, I wanted to talk to you about a platform called Patreon. It's a great way to support individual developers like me, support my dog, support my cat, support everything I do. I am trying to do this full time, and YouTube does not pay the bill, sadly. I would really appreciate it if you at least check it out. So until next time. So I'm entering Navajo Canyon right now, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's been a long time since I've been to Navajo Canyon. I think I only came out to Navajo Canyon once last year. The canyon entrance was well over 313 feet deep. It is an amazing thing there's barely 150 foot of the canyon wall sticking up out of the water at the entrance. My dog and cat had succumbed to the gentle rocking of the boat and the hum of the engine. I would be lying if I said I didn't envy them. It had been about three hours and I too was wanting to take a nap, but the sights that lay ahead are jaw-dropping. Something interesting to note is that this place was quite popular this year, and it had a lot to do with a large landmass reappearing called the Sand Dome. Literally thousands of people came to this place this season, and I'm certain will again next season. The chop here can be quite troublesome when it is busy, as the wakes of various boats bounce off the walls and combine. The wind here can be strong as well, and there were reports of water spouts in this canyon. But again, the monster sleeps during the wintertime, and it was so peaceful I felt like a gift. Glass, water, and a sense of tranquility was gifted to me, and it is now gifted to you. It would not be long until I found my cove, like a safe haven, waiting for me with its arms wide open. I've seen behind me since I came into Navajo Canyon. It's really tempting, but I think I can find a lot better. I have just found the cove of coves in Navajo Canyon. I highly doubt I'm gonna find anything better than this. This is probably the coolest and best cove I've ever been in in my life. I'm so excited. So, as you can see, I've got shelter from the main waterway and all the way around. Here we go, all the way around. And this is just one big, beautiful beach. The other thing, this is gonna be a very safe place to stay. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. You can't park at just any beach, even though there's a really nice beach or there's a really nice rock landing if you're in a steel hold vessel. Um, you can't always park there because there's a lot of dangers, like falling rocks and waterfalls and things like that. You gotta remember that stuff in this spot. It doesn't get no better than this. Anchoring here is easy. There are plenty of natural tie-offs, so no need to set anchors and disturb the environment. There is also a very gradual slope to the beach. IOs and outboards are recommended, but other boats may work too. Sand and landing conditions were good, although there were boulders below the surface in certain spots in this cove. Caution while landing is advised. Water clarity was unbelievably good. This is in large part due to the time of the year the water is not being disturbed and there's low inflow, but also in part due to the quagga mussels that had invaded our lake. They are vicious filter feeders and quaggas are known to create clear water in places they infest. 
The canyon provided very scenic and humbling views. This could be observed from any direction. In addition to that, the place was isolated and most animals would be limited to where they could go here. I found a large broken metal chair that someone had abandoned here. I used it while I was here, but I did remove it as it was garbage that someone had selfishly left behind, and it became my burden to remove, which I did when I left. Alrighty, so I just got to my cove. I'm all set up now. I'm kind of tired. That was, it took me about a little over four hours to get all the way here um, from Huawei, but I only go six miles per hour, so kind of slow. I had to find quite a few different beaches till I settled on this one, and this is absolutely perfect for me. I love it. So I'm gonna be here for the night. The heater's warm. The boat's actually really warm, and it's going up, and I have the heater on the lowest setting. <laughs> this uh, spot should give me some sun during the morning, and it should give me some sun at night, so that should help quite a bit. I'll keep the camera going a little bit tonight and keep everything updated, but I think I'm gonna have to take a small nap. The rest of my day consisted of settling in. I could not help but plan the next step of this journey. The sand dome awaited, and I eagerly wanted to explore it, but that would have to wait. The temperature in the canyons is colder than most places due to the vast amount of shade they provide, and later that night it would get down to 21 degrees. The days are also short and can catch you off guard if you are not paying attention, so it is best to plan to be settled in around 2 to 3 p.m. this time of the year. The sun sets at around 5, so a couple of hours of excess daylight is helpful and gives you time to make adjustments. I ended my day hanging out with my pets while watching some TV before I went to bed. All in all, a good day. So stay tuned for the next episode where I will be continuing this one. So until next time, this is Thor, signing out. I would like to give a special thanks to my Patreons, James, Joseph, and Jay. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you would like to see your name added to this list in future episodes and would like to have access to exclusive content, join my Patreon page. In doing so, you will also directly support me. Thank you in advance if you decide to do so.